Now, using trade as strategy, a trader develops for himself a set of rules that helps to take advantage of online trading. Quite often, traders rely on trading strategies that haven't been tested thoroughly, setting themselves up for failure. And this is one of the reasons I mentioned, don't make a trade you don't understand. Okay? There's lots of gurus out there selling or promoting all different stuff out there. But the fact is, unless you're using something well-known or something you have tested entirely, you're setting yourself up for failure because just because something worked for 10 trades doesn't mean it's going to work for a thousand trades. Because something worked last month doesn't mean it's going to work this month unless somebody's tested it. They've seen all the ramifications. They can know all the innuendos. So unless you've tested it or you know it's a long-standing strategy that's been in the markets for a long time that people have used and the rules are, you know, are, are really reliable, you're setting yourself up for failure. The truth is you can spend hours searching all over the internet for the right strategy and have no luck finding one. Because you know what? There isn't any perfect strategy out there. Now, I've been trading for a lot of years and I have a lot of different strategies. because You don't have one strategy. A strategy is a set of rules, but they're modified by asset, by asset class, by season. You know, I might you trade my indecision candlestick strategy, but it might only work, say, for currencies, it doesn't work well for stocks. Or it might only work during a certain way of trending the markets. And unless you understand exactly how your strategy works and understand the assets you're trading, you're setting yourself up again for failure. One of the biggest mistakes most traders make is and especially with online trading day you're offered so many opportunities there's so many asset classes you know when i when i was trading i could trade agriculturals if i wanted to trade stocks i had to get on the phone to a stock broker because i had to go to a whole different broker you can't be an expert on all the stocks you can't be an expert on all the markets you know some people follow and trade just tech stocks. Some people trade only transportation stocks. I myself trade currencies predominantly, but I only trade Euro crosses. That's it. And I only trade European and American and you know the US dollar, the pound, you know, the primaries. Okay. But that's where I am because I understand how they work. I understand the ins and outs. I can look at a chart and tell you the history of that asset and what it's doing and what its personality is calling for. If I jump over to Facebook, and believe me, I get all these questions on the, I get friends calling me all the time. In fact, I got them calling me just yesterday. Well, I see, you know, somebody calls it, you know, I see Bitcoin's going back up. It's back up to 44,000. You think I should buy because it's going to go to 60? What's my answer? I have no idea. Not because Bitcoin's good, bad, or indifferent. I don't follow it, I don't trade it, I don't know it. So it's important to understand and limit your markets. Now there are two main trading arenas, so to speak. We have hedging and we have speculation. Most of us in this class tonight are speculators. Very few people in the online trading world really use Hedging. Now they'll use hedging as a trading strategy, but they're not hedgers. They're not trying to offset some other or protect some other trade in some other industry or some other broker in another format. So most of it is speculated. We're looking to make profit on either an asset moving up or moving down and make the difference. Now, Forex trading comes in all different shapes and sizes. So before you jump into any of them, we highly recommend you test drive them first. Now, as speculators, or what is speculation? Speculation refers to predicting a move that a company or an asset might make in a certain situation. If done correctly, these predictions greatly improve trading results. Speculation is what day trading is all about, or CFD or short-term trading. Now, 
the what's what um you know the most of us won't be day traders day trading today is an, is a term most people that are trading in CFDs or online finance call themselves day traders. Now, day trading in the older days was very specific. In fact, you had to declare yourself as a day trader to your broker, especially in the U.S. And there were certain rules that a day that applied only to day traders by the regulators. Today, CFD trading and online trading is all the ways you don't have to declare anything. You can open an asset and close the trade when you want. So if you want to be a day trader and close them all before you go to bed at night, that's perfectly fine. But with CFDs, you can keep them open and let them stay open as long as you wish. So with the help of some decent strategies, you can progress in your trading world and ultimately develop your own trading strategy. The downside is this is a time-consuming and difficult process. So like I said earlier, and like I always preach is don't start from scratch. Go online, go on the internet, follow the gurus, watch what they're saying, sign up for some social media. Okay. Start with some pre made strategies, but modify them, get to know them, make them yours. So, although it's better to play it safe, especially if you're new to the game, you need to change your tactics from time to time. This may allow you to see a bigger profit margin or other trades you could have missed. Because keep in mind, all strategies don't work all the time. Some work only in specific types of markets. You know, you always read in the paper and the financial news about risk on and risk off markets. Okay. When the markets don't have much risk in them, some strategies don't work at all. When the markets are highly stressed and very volatile, other strategies work. So let's talk about a couple of the most well-known strategies. So we're gonna provide you with an overview of these strategies that have worked for many years so that you can research the ones that you are interested in and then develop them and make them your own. So before we look at our top trading strategy list for 2022, we should start by considering some of the most important trading tips. One of the most important trading tips I can give you is while the right strategy can help boost the chances of success with your trading efforts, there are only so far that they can take you. For the best results then, you must have also considered the following key trading tip. And this one, I mentioned it before we even started, is risk management. Always make sure you incorporate risk management into your trading strategy. Okay. Why is that so important? Face it, no matter how good you are, no matter how much knowledge you have, no matter how big or much capital you have, you're going to have losses. Now, most people, including myself, I don't even trade it a 50% right, 50% wrong. A good trader may trade at 65% wrong, 35% right. But the fact is, he minimizes his losses through proper risk management so that when a trade is going in, and a loss doesn't mean you lost your shirt. A loss means you set up a trade, you execute a trade, but the markets didn't do what you expected, so you close your trade out and you close it with a slight loss. That's perfectly fine. This is what's going to happen. This is what's supposed to happen. But when you have that right trade, it makes you enough profit to cover those little losses and leave you a net profit. So you do this by having an excellent risk management element to every one of your trades. Ensure you have a suitable trading plan is critical to succeeding with your CFD trading efforts. This means you should determine factors such as profit targets, when, when to enter and exit trades, and any other key factors relating to your trading before making any investments. Like just a week ago, we had a trade uh, class on trading the sweet spot. 
or the trigger. You can have this whole strategy that tells you, yes, you should trade this asset. It should get up to, to this much points. This is where you should put your risk, your stop loss. But maybe you need to figure out and write it down what your trigger is. What's going to kick off? What's going to make you execute that trade? So these simple steps will make it easier to determine when to change your policy or strategy and otherwise when to cash out your overall investment or when the market isn't moving against you. So I keep reiterating, manage risk carefully. CFD trading is a potentially risky business. As such, a critical tip we can give you, whether a new or experienced trader, is to manage risk. So what are the top trading strategies? Well, the one I use for the basis of almost every one of the extended strategies I have now is trend trading. Now, trend trading means finding an asset in the group of tradable assets that you trade, that is, the market is trending. Doesn't mean it's made a huge trend, but you know, a trend is defined as higher highs and higher lows, higher highs and higher lows, higher highs and higher lows. When you have a well-qualified, pretty trend, and these happen all the time, okay? but when you do have this well-qualified trend, it's going to produce you high probability trades. Okay. You can have a market that's moving up and it's going all over the place that's not clean. Trend trading is about finding the asset that is making a clear, high quality move. Now, yes, you could be like some of my students that, you know, they get home from work at six o'clock, they have, they kiss the wife, they talk to the kids, seven o'clock, they, everybody, dinner's over. And you know what? They run right to their office in the house, turn on the computer, and they want to start trading instantaneously. And they can't go to bed unless they've had 10 or 12 trades. You know, it's like an addiction. The fact is, if that's the results you want to have, and that's, that's like your basketball game for the evening, well, that's fine. But you're not going to be successful. Sitting back and waiting for the perfect opportunity and the a be well be developed, beautiful trading strategy and a perfect setup is what it's all about. Finding the best trades in the market and trend trading is the top of your list. Let me just clean this up here a second. Trend trading is one of the most reliable, simple trading strategies. As the name suggests, this type of strategy involves trading in the direction of the current price trend. In order to do so effectively, traders must first identify the overreaching trend direction, duration, and strength. Because trends have direction, of course, an uptrend or downtrend. They also have momentum. How fast and how hard is that trend moving? Now, all these factors will help tell them how strong the current, current trend is and when the market may be primed for reversal. In a trend trading strategy, the trader doesn't need to know the exact direction or timing of the reversal. They simply need to know when to exit their current position to lock in potential earnings and limit losses. You don't want to stay in the market to the very last second. Even when the market is trading, there are bound to be small price fluctuations. Okay, and these are important. Markets should move in a push and ease, a push and ease, push and ease, push and ease. Okay. That tells you that we have a very good trend. Okay. And if you stop to think that it takes a lot of momentum and a lot of effort to push a price either up or down. But it's like a hamster in a cage. When that hamster gets on that wheel and starts pushing that wheel round and round and round, it's amazing that once he gets it started, he gets it going so fast because it gets easier and easier, but it takes a lot of effort to keep it going. 
or so does a trend. And, but once it starts rolling, it's not going to just stop. It's not going to hit a wall and turn around. So therefore, you want to wait till that hamster's got that wheel moving and know that there's no clear wall right in front of him. And know that he's not starting to lose that momentum because you know once he starts losing that momentum, there's a good chance it could stop or reverse. And we have indicators, technical indicators, that will help you give you the velocity and the momentum of the markets and of that trend. So when investing in the direction of a strong trend, a trader should be prepared to withstand small losses with the knowledge that their potential earnings will ultimately surpass losses. For obvious reason, trend traders favor trending markets or those with swinging between overbought and oversold thresholds with relative predictability. So to determine the direction and strength of the current trend, we use things such as moving averages, exponential moving averages, or the moving average convergence and divergence indicator, MACD, or the average directional index. Now, all moving averages and almost all indicators, what we call lagging indicators, they use past price movement to lend context to the current market conditions. In addition to providing insight into the current trend direction and strength, moving average can help us gauge support and resistance. We can also use candlestick charts. And I'm not a big candlestick pattern trader. I, I, I read my price action by looking at the candles. I don't look to see, oh, there's a Hammurabi and there's a Doji and there's a, a three black soldiers and three white crows. I'm looking for reading the candlesticks and price action to see where the momentum is to see who's controlling the market and to see potential reversals. So rather than anticipating the direction of the reversal and entering into a new position, trend traders will use these signals to exit their current position. Once a new trend has manifested, the trader will once again trade in the direction of the current trend. Let me pop up some live charts here because I think I have some to show you. Here we can see a long-term <coughs> downtrend. But we combined our trend, our support and resistance from that trend. And we've looked for what we see with our candlestick patterns, a reversal, and we're looking to trade the range. Again, here we can see, and these are live charts. So we can see how well developed this trend is. Look how pretty that uptrend was. Now it's over. Look how pretty that downtrend. Look how pretty this uptrend was. So they look just like the graphics I showed you. <coughs> now again here, beautiful downtrend. May it would have given us beautiful trading at that point. Then we had a very nice uptrend. Now we have congestion. Yeah, but we can see all of this by sitting back and waiting for these assets to give us these potential clues for trading. Now, another type of trading, which we're going to look at in a minute, combines using the support and resistance and the bouncing between them. But look at this. Bounce off of, of support, move back to resistance, bounce back down to support, back up to resistance, back down to support, up to resistance, back down to support. <coughs> At that range, we could have gotten in eight good solid trades. So there's many different ways to use it. But trend trading is one of the most well-known, well-respected strategies and a good point to start out building your own. So remember, in trend trading tools, we use price momentum will often change before our price change occurs. So momentum indicators such as stochastics or RSI can also help identify exit points. These indicators help traders identify when price is approaching overbought or oversold levels. 
trend trading doesn't require traders to know what will happen next, only to understand what is happening now. As such, it tends to be a more reliable and consistent strategy. Now, to trade effectively, however, it's important to confirm the direction and strength of a new trend before entering a position. Although you may not be the first one to enter the trade, being patient will ultimately shield you from unnecessary risk. <clears throat> then our next popular strategy for this year is position trading. Position trading is a strategy in which traders hold positions over a more extended period. Now, we could talk about weeks or, or years. Very few CFD trades are held open even for a week. So for a CFD trade, a position trade would be keeping a trade open for two days or three days as opposed to a couple hours. As a longer term trading strategy, this approach requires traders to take a macro view of the market and sustain smaller market fluctuations that counter their positions. They also conduct a fundamental analysis for stocks to identify micro and macro economic conditions that may influence the market and value of the asset in question. The success or failure of position trading hinges on the traders understanding the market in question and their ability to manage risk, to lock in potential earnings at regular intervals, and some business and traders choose to use targeted trading strategies. Now, I use targeted risk management strategies where I'm constantly moving my stop loss closer and closer as my asset moves into profit so that I'm moving it closer and closer so that I am being successful and that if the market reverses, I don't get stopped out or lose my profit and, you know, and turn a winning trade into a losing trade. And three is range trading. Now, I showed you this on the charts a second ago. Range trading is when we define a very strong level of support and resistance above and below a price. Range trading is based on the concept of support and resistance. On a price action graph, support and resistance levels can be identified as the highest and lowest point that the price reaches before reversing in the opposite direction. Together, these support and resistance levels create a bracketed trading range. In a trending market, price will continue to break previous resistant levels, creating a stair-like support and resistance pattern. So not only, let me go back to the live chart, are they just in sideways markets? Like here, or here, because here we have a range, here we have range trading, here we have entry points bouncing off the same levels, but we can also build our own support and resistance like here in a downtrend where we're using the tops of the highs and the bottom of the lows to build ourselves a level of support and resistance that gives us these lines that we can then use for breaking above and below. Because as you can see, we have this beautiful pattern trading, even though we're in a downtrend, we're we're trading within a range that we could have sold down, bought up, sold down, bought up, and then we would have gotten out of the markets at this point, but then we went into a beautiful trending market in an uptrend. Sorry about that. <clears throat> now, when price reaches the overbought, which is the resistance level, traders anticipate a reversal in the opposite direction and sell. Similarly, when trade prices approach the oversold or support level, it's considered a buy signal. Finally, if price breaks through this established range, it may be a sign that the new trend is about to take shape. Range traders are less interested in anticipating breakouts and more interested in markets that oscillate between support and resistance levels without 
trending in one direction for extended period. So if the markets start trending, what do you do? You jump over to your trend trading strategy. When markets are sideways and trading within a range, you jump back to your range trading strategy. But what I'm giving you are words and concepts that you have to then put into a written trading plan that covers everything of how you're gonna make your decision. Now, range traders use support and resistance levels to determine when to enter and exit and what positions to take. To do so, they often use band and momentum indicators such as stochastics or RSI to, overbought, to identify overbought and oversold conditions. Trading the dips and surges of the peaks and valleys of ranging markets can be consistent and a rewarding strategy because traders are looking to capitalize on the current trend rather than predicting it. There's also a less inherent risk. That said, timing is exceptionally important. Oftentimes, an asset will remain overbought and oversold for an extended period of time before reversing to the opposite side. To shoulder less risk, traders should wait to enter into a new position until the price reversal can be confirmed. Now, the online trading market offers many opportunities for both profits and, unfortunately, losses. In order to have a chance at creating potential profits, traders need to choose a strategy and stick to it for consistent trading results. You know, too many people are jumping from place to place, asset to asset, strategy to strategy. They're just, they're just trying to force trades. I'll be honest with you, I live in this environment and I'm in the markets continually seven, eight, nine hours a day. And if I get 10 trades in an entire week, that's a lot. Not because I'm busy. I'm only looking for high probability trades. Now, if I had a large capital account, I could be getting rich, but unfortunately I don't have much money. So I'm, my investments are relatively small. So I'm very much like you guys. I'm just a working Joe, so I can't afford to make a, a million dollar trade that maybe make me twenty thousand dollars. Those not you know, I don't have that kind of capital. But remember, managing risk is always important and taking your time watching the markets and wait for high probability trades to present themselves. Okay. Now, as I mentioned earlier, if you do have any questions, please feel free to write them into the screen. And either myself or somebody or one of our other financial analysts at Elbex will write you a detailed answer and send, send it to you by email. Or if you want to call back, just click in, you know, when you type in your question, say, please call me. You know, all the information you set up when you logged in is stored, so we have it all. And we'll only bother you if you've asked for uh, a question or a call back. So thank you very much for joining us. And I hope I gave you some inspiration tonight. Bye now.